Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Lily Grace Lifestyle Podcast. Today, I have Tucker Arnold on, and he is a real estate agent. We actually went to high school together, so now we're reconnecting, kind of like Zoe Woodman. Um, So it's kind of really exciting to have you on, so thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited. What defines your lifestyle? Well, obviously, I mean, like after high school, everyone kind of tries to jump into the whatever they want to do, whether they end up going to school or they kind of jump into work. Um, I think a big one for me that I've really tried to focus on after jumping into work and like getting my career started is having, having some balance, um, you know, making sure that like I check myself where I'm like, I'm, I'm putting enough time into work. I'm putting enough time into myself and my career, but I'm also not losing track of the things that I enjoy. Um, you know, I have, I have a couple of different jobs, uh, real estate being my, my main one. Um, you know, other than that, go surfing with my friends, you know, play guitar, you know, um, just, just different things, get out of the house, you know, days that I have off things that I don't have uh, a lot to do, just, just make sure I have a good balance. And I would say that, that would say that's pretty much what I focus on, no, whether, whatever it is. I love that. And I think it's so important, especially for as people who are really passionate about what they do and kind of starting their career, it's like so important to have that balance. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's easy to, I, I think it's easy to get lost in it. Like you get, you find something like you said that you're passionate about and something that you, you really want to succeed in. And it, it's easy mm-hmm. to lose, lose sight of people and friends and family and, yeah. you know, things that you used to enjoy. So it's, it's important to stay, stay focused on both things. I, I, I agree. That is so true. I think that's a really good point. And can, for people who don't know who you are, can you kind of give us your background and your, just a little intro? Yeah. So I grew up in New Hampshire. Obviously we went to high school together. Um, we went to Co Brown. Um, I played hockey my entire life and that was kind of like my, not my personality, but I, I, everything I did in, in life pretty much up to the time I was like 17, 18 had everything to do with hockey. Um, and then, you know, I, I moved away from home to play hockey. I, I traveled to Europe to play. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I went. Um, so it was the year after we graduated high school. So it was the summer of 2018. I went to play in Sweden and Finland. Oh, I did um, see that. That's so amazing. Yeah, it was it was awesome. Uh, definitely one of the best experiences. But when I came home, I kind of decided after the next season following that that hockey wasn't really something I wanted to pursue anymore Hmm. um I started working in restaurants started I started out when I was younger in restaurants um you know just doing basic stuff hosting and you know helping out the bar um so I started serving and just under a year of serving at the restaurant um I was asked to be a salaried manager so I moved to Walton that was my job to kind of take over that restaurant and um you know help figure out how to bring it up in the company and did that for about a year and then COVID hit. Mm. So that kind of put a stop to everything as everybody knows. Um, After COVID ended and things started opening up again, I was asked to go back. They offered me my job back. Um, I declined and I, I was ready to move on to something else. So I used the time with the unemployment and being out of work and like the free time that everyone was kind of struggling to fill. Mm. Um, I used that to take my take my exam and take my classes and study nice. and stuff like that. So when when everything really really kind of got back into the swing of things, I was able to jump right into my new career, which was definitely a good decision. Wow, I love that because now you're a real estate agent. But I think my boss actually was a waitress for five years, and now we're selling commercial furniture. And I like served in high school. But I think like being a server is basically like running your own business. And then when you went into the managerial part of it, like it is all so important if you want to be successful. I feel like in sales, especially because you have to deal with really crazy people. (laughs) Yeah. And there's, there's like a lot of things that like in like the sales world and even like just the professional world in general that um, people refer to restaurants and sales as being one in the same where you learn like the soft skills. Yeah. And what they call them, like learning how to read people and have a conversation and um, inform a conversation based off of what the other person is telling you right. uh, to give yourself the best, the best outcome, to give them the best outcome. Um, and that's, that's something that like very few 
people. I mean, we'll probably get into that later and I could probably give you examples, but that's something that I, I've realized now kind of in the real world that there's not a lot of people that have those soft skills. So Agreed. it was definitely, definitely beneficial. I'm sure you can agree. Yeah, for sure. And I think ever since I was young and maybe you too, like I just always love talking to adults. Like I feel like I got along better with adults than I did my peers. <laughs> so that's probably why I didn't talk to you much yep. in high school, but nothing personal. But it's just funny <laughs> because like you're so right. You you get out into the real world and you're like, oh my God, no one knows what they're doing. There are 40 year olds that don't know how to talk to people. And I, and I feel like working in a restaurant just teaches you so much about customer service and psychology yeah. behind people. Yeah. It's funny that you said that, that that was the best advice that I ever got from a manager. Um, he told me that serving is very much running your own business. You get a section, you get these five tables, mm -hmm. these five tables are your, this is your storefront. Are you going to, yeah. are you going to let it be messy or are you going to make sure that, you know, everything's clean and people want to sit, sit in your section. And obviously, you know, their managers so it's like they're helping their business as well but yeah. I mean you know you, you make better money doing that so it, that was probably some of the best advice I got being in restaurants. Wow I love that now but five years ago how were you different than you are today do you think? Oh god five <laughs> years ago I probably wasn't even I wouldn't have recognized myself as the same person five years ago. Me neither. Five years ago I was what was five years ago senior year? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Senior year, five years ago, man, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Probably along the same lines as most other people. But like I said before, I was, I was chasing playing hockey and I was figuring mm -hmm. out where I was going to move and go play. And I think I was just in, I, I, I was in stuck in a, um, stuck in that rhythm that I had for, for my entire life. And now mm -hmm. after breaking free of that, I was kind of able to see myself for what I thought that I could be or what I could become and kind of leave all of that behind even though it was a hard decision mm. that was it was a better decision and moved away from home and you know had some great experiences since then mm -hmm. um uh, like 100 percent different like not even the same person so, so to go back to the question like <laughs> just completely a different person same. I totally agree. And I think it's interesting because we seriously haven't talked since high school. And it's just yep. so interesting to see where people go after we graduate. It's like insane. Like is Zoe's killing it. You're killing it. And yeah. I just love following people who are following what they love. It's just great. Yeah. I love, I, I, that's like actually the, one of the only reasons I love still having like some sort of social media with people that I used to like, go with and, like people that we grew up with is like, they they were they like just as we were like they were a completely different person in high school and now we're seeing who they've become and it's like oh like everyone's just <laughs> everyone's just figuring it out all at the same time and it's just yeah. good to see where people are at yeah, yeah for sure for sure I love that um and in general growing up was there a role model or a mentor that you really looked up to like where did you get your drive from because I feel like even in high school you definitely had like a vision for yourself you were you were driven too yeah, I mean, I would say that, like, I, I don't know that I would pick anybody in particular, but I think that um, I saw a future of, I, I knew in high school and I knew when I was younger, there were things that I wanted and there were things that I wanted to do. You know, making a career of things is, is figuring out a way to, to get the things that I've always wanted or figuring out a way to make things work. Um, where back, back then, kind of going back to your last question, the, the difference, I guess, is I had absolutely no idea how to achieve that. I, right. I had no idea how to go about that, how to start. Um, and, you know, you always learning along the way. Um, and I've had great mentors. I really have. And like I said, it's not that I, would, I wouldn't pick one person. I've had great mentors, right. whether it's coaches or bosses or even my parents. Like mm -hmm. my, my parents like have been super supportive of everything I've chosen. Um, they gave up 15 years of their life to, to uh, have me play hockey and they, my sister, yeah. who's four years younger than me, grew up in hockey rinks. So, I mean, they gave up a lot too. And then when I decided not to play anymore, like it, they were super supportive. It wasn't, That's there was great. no hard feelings about it. So, um, yeah, that, that, I mean, everyone here and there, like, I, I feel like I took a bit from each person that I was, that I was connected to along the years. For sure. I agree. And also too, part of this episode, we're going to focus on kind of how you 
went against the mainstream. And I totally agree because I always say when everyone turns right, you turn left. And Mm -hmm. I feel like you probably agree with that. But can you tell us about how your experience was not going to college and how it kind of set you up for success now? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of interesting because, you know, in my personal life, uh, like my girlfriend, Faith, and a lot of our friends, like, all went to school. And they decided a few years ago, well, not a few now, like five, six years ago, what they wanted to do. And they kind of went after it in school. Um, Same for my sister now and a lot of people. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't, I couldn't pick one thing and say, I want to go to school for this. I want to learn this. And then I want to do that later on in life. I had no idea. Um, So for me, it was kind of a decision where I was like, it's not that I didn't want to go or I didn't want to have those experiences that everyone has in college, but for me, it it just wasn't the right time for me. It didn't make sense for me to do that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, college is one of those things that if you change your mind down the road, you can always go back. You can always do something. For sure. Um, But as far as how it helped me, I was able to, like I said, move away younger than um, a lot of other people I know. Mm -hmm. I was able to, you know, travel to Europe a couple times since. Um, Go back now. I go back now every year, a couple times a year. I love that. Um, so, I mean, I got some cool, cool experiences, just some like world experiences that had I gone to school, I probably wouldn't have gotten. Mm. And, um, I think a lot of those experiences helped me shape who I was as a person, learn new things, learn different people, different cultures, Mm. um, and kind of give me more of an idea on how I was going to decide how I wanted the rest of my life to be. Um, and not to say that if I went to school, it wouldn't be the case, but right. I think I I don't have any regrets, I guess, is what I'm saying about not going. I think that um, every choice that I made to not go was for the right reason. Yeah. Or every reason I had was for the right reason. Yeah. Um, And yeah, I, I don't have any regrets about it. Honestly, kudos to you because I always say like, if my future child or my sister had no idea what they wanted to do for college, there's really no point in going to college because it's like you're gonna go for a liberal arts major you're gonna get a major in psychology you're gonna get out and you're gonna have no idea what you're doing with your life so I feel like I wouldn't even want to go to school if I didn't know I wanted to be an interior designer so like kudos for you to kind of say like okay this isn't the right path for me but you found your way you went to Europe and traveled you managed a restaurant and now you're in real estate so you found your way and I think there's a stigma on college like if you go to school like you're going to be successful but that's not always the case like you can make double the amount of money becoming a plumber an electrician than you can becoming a like school teacher so it's like there's no harm in either path but it's just kind of amazing and you don't have student loans so love that for you yeah that's that that's definitely a huge plus and and to go off of what you said you know the world is always changing and especially now with the power of social media and the power of you know the internet and just everything that people can access just from their fingertips like it's not it's not things aren't like they were 30 years ago 40 years ago where or even longer than that like where you had to go to school and get a degree and then um you know get a get a job in your degree using what you learned in your major like that's not that's not real anymore like there's yeah. people that I know that don't even have a job and make more money than probably all of us because they trade stocks on their phone like For sure. yeah like people like you don't even you know what I mean like you, you don't need to uh you don't need to have anything it, you, you success you can you know based on like the entire idea of this conversation like you can find success anywhere if, you, if you're willing to like look for it yeah and sure. college is kind of like that way like you said where it does have that stigma it's always like if you go, like, you're going to get this, you're going to get this. And like you said, it's not always the case. Yeah. It's always how you apply yourself to. And yeah, there are people that really thrived in their college careers. And luckily I was one of those, but there are some people that are like, oh, I really wish I didn't go because they didn't get much out of it. And I feel bad, but it's like, I feel like whether you went to school or you didn't go to school, there's always a way to find your passion if you just keep going. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So can you tell us about the process of becoming a real estate agent? Like how in your mind did that come to you during COVID? So when I was living in New Hampshire before I moved away, um, it was when I was playing hockey still. And I I was kind of in the mindset that I was going to be on my way out um, of playing and pursuing that long term. Um, So I took a class in Portsmouth um every every real estate agent no matter what the state you have to take 40 hours um so you have to take like a pre prerequisite class and you just have to do like all the studying learn the law 
Um, and so I did that in New Hampshire about three years ago. Mm. And it was right at the summer that I was going to move to Waltham. So I didn't know that at the time, but mm. I had just barely finished the class. I scheduled one exam in New Hampshire. Unfortunately, I didn't pass it. And two weeks later, I got the call that I was going to be going to Waltham. So I kind of I kind of put real estate on the back burner for a little bit. And uh, like I said, I went to Waltham for the year, managed the restaurant. And when I came out of COVID, um, I thought that it was something that I was going to revisit. I, I, it was just, it was in my head. I was like, you know, this isn't what I want to do anymore. I want to get away from the restaurant for a little bit. And it was a perfect time to do it. Um, so you know, like I said, you, you, so I had to take another 40 hour exam because my old one had um, expired. So, and I was living in Massachusetts. So I had to take a Massachusetts exam uh, exam and the class. So I took that like while everyone was locked down in my apartment in Waltham. And then um, I ended up moving to Quincy with my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And while I was in Quincy, that's when I finally finished the class because it took it took most of the summer um it's like a couple classes a week so it's only a couple hours here and there so the 40 hours it takes a little bit to get there and um yeah the test is hard I'm not gonna lie I mean I know I know some people that have passed it on their first try I was not one of those people it's a hard test and it's funny it's one of those tests where the more you take it it sounds weird but the more you take it the harder it gets because mm -hmm. you're seeing questions over and over again that you know you've seen before and there's multiple answers that look good and sometimes you can't remember what you said last time and you don't yeah. know if you got it right or wrong um and that that was a big one for me that was that was probably the hardest part for me because I did I did the studying I, I probably could have studied harder but I did the studying and I did the classes and I did the work but um yeah I was seeing the same questions over and over and over again and hmm. it was that was hard but finally got through it. And then I was really lucky for, for my start. Yeah, for sure. And then you, well, you just transitioned to a new broker, right? So can you talk I to did. us a little bit about how you found your first one and how you ended up here? Yeah. So right when I was about to finish my class and I was getting ready for my test, um, I was shopping around brokerages and, and real estate is kind of one of those things. And this is like kind of a tip that I would give other people trying to get into the business mm -hmm. um when you go for an interview at a brokerage they're not interviewing you you're interviewing them you're yeah. you're trying to find out what business model they have and how it's going to help you and if that business model aligns with your personal business model mm -hmm. um so it's not it's not a matter of like i'm going to go uh, let's see if i get the job it's it's is this going to work for me is, is this the right fit for me Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of started shopping around. I met a broker um, that was at a Natick. And like I said, at the time I was living in Waltham, so it, it made perfect sense for me. Mm -hmm. And she kind of gave me some tips and she was kind of helping me through the exams because like I said, it, it, they're not easy. Um, and after I passed, I was like, you know what? They've been really good to me. Um, things have been good. I'm going to stick with them. So I signed with them and I was with Coldwell Banker out mm -hmm. of Natick. I was there for um, since last October until just recently, this, the past couple of weeks, I switched brokerages. Um, and things were really, really, really good. Um, you know, I got along really well with the broker and, mm -hmm. um, you know, I got some really good referrals from uh, agents in my office and th things were great. Um, but, you know, going into now more recent times, it was time for a change. Mm -hmm. Big brokerages, are going to do a really, really good job at helping you start your business. They give you business cards. They have free classes through the through the brokerage, so you can just keep keep learning, continuing your education, mm -hmm. um, and they set you up really well for success. They really yeah. do. After you've been experienced and like you've done a decent amount of deals, and you've kind of you feel like you know what you're doing it's probably time to go to another brokerage that's going to give you more of your money. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I saw it. I like that. That makes sense. From them, um, my broker was a great mentor to me. You know, that's she awesome. was always available. Um, I was going through deals that were pretty complex for like a first year agent, mm -hmm. you know, multiple moving pieces, multiple properties. And, you know, I'd call her at like 11 o'clock at night with a, with a question because I had, five emails from a lender and appraiser, my client, yeah. and 
you know, she was, she was always the answer. And I, I definitely took a lot away from that company. Um, but like I said, after, after you kind of get your feet wet and you feel like, you know what you're doing, it, it's a good idea to, you know, continue to shop your options and, and figure out, you know, reassess, like how has my business changed since when I started? Right. And like I said in the beginning, is, is the place that I'm at still the best fit for me regarding my business? Um, and and when, I, when I asked myself those questions, when I had other options on the table, um, it, it wasn't the best fit for me. Something else was going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so I went with a brokerage that's out of New Hampshire. Mm. They're out of Merrimack, New Hampshire. Um, yep. But the broker has a broker's license in Maine, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts. So nice. I'm able to work under her broker's license here, kind of more independently. And a little plus side to that too is I get to keep a lot more of my money from from each deal. So it, huh. it was a win-win. I really like that. And do you think you'll ever go to Maine or New Hampshire? Or are you really just focusing on Mass right now? So I, so obviously, like I got Mass because I was living here when I passed the passed the exam. Yeah. Uh, this past summer in July, I actually passed my New Hampshire test. Um, so I have nice. my New Hampshire license and my Massachusetts license. Um, I haven't used my New Hampshire license yet, um, but it's it's definitely a great thing to have. Obviously, mm -hmm. I grew up in New Hampshire. I have right. family and friends there. So I mean, should um, an opportunity arise, I, I'm prepared for it. But as far as you know, what I'm focusing on right now, I'm really trying to stay in my area. I'm trying to not downsize my, my, the areas that I'm working in, but I'm kind of trying to uh, refocus it to like where I live. Um, when I was starting out, a lot of the deals that were coming to me were Boston, north of Boston. There was referrals in Boston, in the city, mm -hmm. in the on the North Shore. And don't get me wrong, they were great. And I was super thankful to have deals and like have clients. Um, but now that I'm kind of like a little bit more established, I'm trying to tr kind of bring it back to my area on the South Shore so I mm -hmm. can get a little, little bit more of that balance where like I'm not fighting Boston <laughs> traffic at 3.30 on a Friday to go to a showing. Yeah, like me. And like I could drive like 15 minutes down the road to a showing, which which is super ideal. And, you know, I'll do it. I really will. Because I mean, <laughs> not going to turn something down but right. that's kind of my project right now is like relocating my business to like where I'm at that makes sense and that's kind of the beauty of real estate and certain jobs because you can kind of just focus it on where you are in your life and your location too so that's really that's really yeah. interesting hmm. yeah I love and, you know it, it, it is tough too because like you have to build like a new clientele oh, yeah wherever you go. for sure and let let everybody you know know that like <laughs> I'm here now you know if you have friends in the area like this is where I'm at I'm making home base here mm -hmm. but but it is it's uh like you said it is kind of a luxury to yeah. the job where you have a little bit of that freedom for hmm. sure that's so interesting but you've only been well not only but like I feel like you just started and you're already finding success like I mean when I make a sale it, it like gives me excitement to like keep going and keep going like have you found that yeah. when you make deals it's like really like exciting <laughs> oh 100 percent. like closing a deal or like especially you know like real estate is such a hard um industry to like really break into like I, there's a lot of people that get into the business and you know their first year they close one deal or two deals and honestly that's that's average like that's normal i, I did hear that yeah that's that's like pretty normal um and I was lucky enough this year, by, by June of this year, I had seven transactions. Wow. So for, from October to June, like I was busy. Like I was mm -hmm. on the phone constantly every day, a hundred emails. And that was probably also too, like learning how to um, juggle more than one client at a time and right. like, you know, do those things. It, it was definitely motivating because I was like, oh, I'm a new agent and like, I can already like handle this. I can already do this. Like right. everything's up from here. Like I can just keep going. Yeah. Um, so that was, yeah, definitely. And then closing a deal obviously is great because it's just like, everyone's happy. Your clients are happy. <laughs> you get paid, you know, you close the deal and you move on. And then yep. a lot of my deals since then and have come from friends of past clients. Right. Same. So I, which, which is amazing because, you know, it, it really shows like me and that's probably the most rewarding part is that like, it shows me that like 
my clients enjoyed their time with me. They thought that like I did a good job and they were right. happy throughout the entire transaction. So they're going to send them, send me to their friends. And um, that that's probably the most rewarding part, honestly. I love that. And um, this might be a silly question, but the real estate agent I worked for, I think represented uh, sellers and not buyers. Like, how does that work? Are you both sides? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's all, all about preference. Um, there's some agents that choose to only work with buyers and they okay. only write contracts for offers and buyers. There's some agents that have an influx in listings. So they know a lot of people that are getting ready to sell. So they probably mm -hmm. only focus on selling houses and getting the listings up. Um, and then th there's so many parts to real estate too. Like there's agents that only do rentals. Um, yeah. A lot of, a lot of people in, in the city, a lot of agents in the city, they only focus on rentals because they turn over so quick. Mm -hmm. They can True. do a couple, they can do three, four, five rentals a month. Right. And they can make the same kind of money that one person does on one sale. Mm -hmm. And it helps them because they get more transactions, they get more clients and it's just more volume. Um, and then, and then there's like, there's teams. So you can join a team and you kind of have like a team leader mm -hmm. and they may provide you with leads. They might give you clients and then you only have uh, responsibility for part of the transaction. Mm -hmm. Um, and then somebody else takes it over from there. Um, so there's all different kinds of work in real estate. There's a ton. Um, personally, I went solo from the beginning. So I would do whatever was needed. I've, I've done multiple buyer transactions. I've done listings. I've done nice. rentals. So I've kind of gotten a good, um, like a good amount of uh, a variety of things done um, where, like I said, going back to what, what I was saying before, like I feel pretty confident now that like I can take over something on my yeah. own. I, I don't need to make those phone calls and, and, and the help to walk through something because I've gotten a good variety of deals. Um, I love that. Now I just, I just, just like, it's just experience on honestly. And that's yeah. what it comes down to. Yeah, for sure. And I love how you started during COVID and that didn't deter you because the market was really hot <laughs> during COVID and super after. Hot. So like, it was like a really good time to get in. I feel like super hot. I mean, the market's been pretty hot for two years yeah, um, as sure. a seller's market. I mean, I saw houses going for near a hundred thousand dollars over asking. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And it's, it's crazy. Um, and, and my first client last December, so it was like a month and a half right after I got licensed, I was setting my business up and a client fell in my lap and it was a buyer. And I was like, oh. I was like, I really got to like kind of figure it out here. I was like, this market is so hot. And we ended up getting the first house that they went after. Wow. And it was it was awesome. I was like, wow, was like, this, this market's <laughs> insane. And like, we, we just did that. We got the first deal. So that kind of like jump started a little bit of the confidence. That was like a little bit of like, that's awesome. You know, oh, I can, I can do this. I can do this like this. And, and, you know, I ran into, I ran into some roadblocks <laughs> after that and there was things I had to figure out, but that was, that was a good uh, confidence booster right in the beginning for sure. For sure. Yeah. I love that. And um, I know people like I've seen so many videos, they make it so dramatic because I'm really into real estate and then finances too. But mm -hmm. they say like the market's about to do a downturn. Um, but I've also read things and seen things like the stock market and the real estate market are totally separate from each other, which is kind of true because the stock market goes like this and the real yeah. estate market has been like this. But what are your thoughts on that? And are you like nervous for the next year or so? I mean, no, definitely not nervous for the next year. It's going to be, it's going to be less stressful for, for buyers. And, you know, like I said, there's been a lot of buyers that, you know, went in way over asking because in all honesty, like they were desperate for housing, like right. they needed a house. And if they had the money to put down on something, they were going to, mm -hmm. and n nobody, nobody specific, but just the way, the way right. economics work and the way finances work is there's gonna be a lot of people that overpaid for a house and the house is not worth that yeah um and unfortunately there's going to be a lot of people that are going to end up defaulting on loans because mm -hmm. they 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 offered way too much for the house yeah and that's going to be a big correction in the market that's going to be a lot of people coming to terms with it in in six months or even even sooner being like we can't afford our payments like these are way too high because we offered so much money um, and, and those houses are going to end up going up for sale. 
whereas two years ago there was two listings for every 100 buyers out there and right. it's going to flip flop and it's going to kind of even out a little bit where there's going to be there's going to be more opportunity for buyers which you know supply and demand is obviously going to drop mm -hmm. the price on them for sure because i know it was almost like a trend i feel like people got sick of where they lived when they were sitting in their houses during covid and they either mm -hmm. renovated like design wise or they were like okay we're gonna move now this is our time so a lot of millennials did that and now they're regretting yeah. their decision just like kind of like you said because they overpaid and now they're like oh shoot i can't afford this so yeah. it's just so interesting but i guess like do you recommend to young adults to buy as soon as they can because you and i are both renting right now and people are like oh my god we're wasting our money which yes in a sense yes but i also feel like we are paying for our time right now if something breaks yeah. i don't have to even lift a finger i don't have to pay taxes it's like yep. in a sense we're helping ourselves because we can fully focus on our careers and our families and yep. our partners and whatever else so what are your thoughts on that it's a tough question and you, you kind of hit a few of the points that i was going to say it's um you know the money that you're paying every month towards rent um it's not you're you don't have any equity in it like you're right. paying for the property via your landlord and then in, in most cases, the landlord is going to make a little bit of money off of you living there, um, or all the money if they own the, if they own the property. Um, so it's a it's a great idea. And again, going back to like the personal growth, uh, aside from the finances, mm -hmm. if it's time for you to move out of your house and take the next step and like go into like the next part of your life, it's a great idea. And it, and if you can get into a situation that isn't going to run you dry every month and you're going to have some financial freedom and you can pay your bills and you can have a balance of life, then it's a great idea to go rent and, and kind of get out on your own for the first time. The renting part and going right to owning a house, um, there's a lot that comes with that. Like you yeah. said, there's taxes and there's property uh, management, like, you know, keeping up with your house and, and fixes and repairs. And as, as renters, you don't have to worry about any of that. Like you just, you just pay, you live and you focus on your career or yourself mm -hmm. or whatever you want to do. Um, but what the plus side on owning is you pay every month to the bank or you pay down your loan and you have equity in the house. And yeah. that's huge because all the money you make essentially is still yours. You're not giving any money away minus the little bit that you pay in interest. Right. The bank that they have to make off of you. Um, it's, it's kind of a catch 22 honestly. And it, and I, and my answer, my honest answer would be wherever you're at in life, like wherever your, your finance, my, your finances are, wherever your personal situation is like, whatever's going to fit better for you. I, that's, that's what you should go with. Um, I know that right now I definitely am, am going to be ready to buy pretty soon. That's great. Um, unfortunately with real estate and it works a lot, the way a lot of other sales jobs do with commissions and uh, <laughs> non-steady income, you have to have two years of income. Um, oh. So they have to average two years for they to say, okay, you make X amount per year. We're going to base your loan amount off of that. Hmm. Um, so where I've been in it just over a year now, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit hard, but again, with that full year of renting and not having to worry about all that, other, all those other things, I've been able to, you know, put a lot of money aside and, you know, set myself up for the next year. So, so I'm in a good spot. Wow. And that's, and that's what that. I would say. That's what I would, that would be my advice to, you know, going back to the question, young people getting ready to do that, wherever, wherever you're at, whatever choice is going to work better for you, finances or personal life, that, that would be my suggestion. Yeah, for sure. Your dog is so cute. Um, <laughs> but he's, he just ran away, but I totally agree in that sense. And I feel like there's no right or wrong answer. I just feel like sometimes like media and like videos and all this stuff is like, okay, everyone needs to buy. So people are like, oh my gosh, I should buy right now. But if you have student loans, like 50 grand of student loans, 20,000 of uh, car loans, and then all this other loans, like, I don't think it's the smartest decision because like you said, yeah. you're going to have to stash away a ton of money <laughs> to buy a house. Yeah. So it's like, it's like a risky thing to do, but also like, I'm kind of like you in the next probably three years for me, or maybe five, like I want to buy like a duplex or a double decker or something. So I can live mm -hmm. in one half and then rent out the other. Yeah. So yeah. I'll call you. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's the, that's like the house hacking 
Yep. <laughs> thing that, you know, is, is blowing up all over social media. Live in one, rent out the other, pay for your mortgage. And if you have money left over, so like you essentially live for free and or make a little bit in profit. And not to mention you have equity in the home. So yeah. when you're ready to up, upscale from there, you, you can, you know, that I, the $500,000 house and I, I have $250,000 in equity. I'll take right. that 50, bring it to another house and, and just keep going from there. And that's, most millionaires make all their money and get all their start from real estate. That's, it's that's so just true. A fact. That's just it's a fact. So like they, you know, millionaires own multiple multifamilies, multiple apartment yeah. complexes, and that's just all passive income. That's yeah. They don't. Sure. They're not working. They're not putting in hours for that. That's just that they own it. Yeah, for sure. And do you think you'll do that one day too? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. I, 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 I don't plan on selling a house if I, yes, you know, get yeah. a house. <laughs> Um, within the next year or two, like, like according to plan, if I'm ready to move out of that house and go to something else, I'm going to leave and rent out my space and go to another one and then do that again and do that again. And then, you know, by the time I'm 30, 35, I can have four or five properties under my name. So smart. Yeah. And that's, no, me too. I always say life is like Monopoly. You just want to buy as many houses as you can and just stick with them on, but it's like, you have to buy and hold. And same with yeah. stocks too. Like that's same what stocks, I believe yeah. in. <laughs> so, so that goes back to your question though. That that is the only the only uh, similarity between that is buy and hold for long term and you'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can't you can't day trade real estate. Yeah, that's that's true. That'd be pretty tricky. But yeah, for sure. And do you think you you can picture yourself living in New Hampshire or like on the South Shore for a long time or just everywhere? <laughs> Honestly. I go back and forth all the time. Like New Hampshire is where I grew up. It's my family's there. Um, but because I've done so much work down here and set myself up in this area, and you know, I have some a good amount of clientele now, clientele, their friends, their family, you know, yeah. I just have a spider web of people here. Um, I will probably end up staying in this area. Um, nice. Not to mention affording real estate in this area is, um, definitely more expensive than in New Hampshire. So sure. having higher amount of equity, higher assets um, for the long, for the long term is, is definitely a move. Yeah. Um, you know, you could obviously buy a couple of houses in New Hampshire for the price of oh. one really nice house here. Ridiculous. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's still, um, I would, I would imagine that I'll probably stay in this area for a while. Yeah, because that's funny. I was just wondering because I was the same way a couple of years ago. I was like, oh, I love Boston. And I love the city, but I also grew up in New Hampshire and I love Portsmouth, like Rye area. Yeah. But now that I'm here, I'm like, okay, yeah, there's no way I can move back. I go home and I'm like, what is this world that I used to live in? There's nothing there. I'm Damn. like, what did I used to do for fun? <laughs> so funny. I went home like I went home like a couple of weeks ago with a couple same. of friends from here and I was showing them around. Like you said, we went to Portsmouth and my parents met us out for dinner and stuff. Nice. And um, yeah, I, I was looking around and I was like, this is like, we used to come to Portsmouth on like a Thursday <laughs> night and like just Literally. walk around for fun. I know. And now, now like living in the city, like you're in Waltham, like I was there, like so close to Boston. It's like everything yeah. you want is like at your fingertips. It's, it's like, ridiculous. Oh, what do we feel like doing tonight? You want to go to the Red Sox game? You want to go to the Bruins <laughs> game? Should we go out for drinks? Should we go to dinner? Like everything is right there. I know. Isn't it great? And yeah. Oh yeah. No, I'm the same way. And it's like in Waltham, the house that you want will be a million dollars. But if you put it back in New Hampshire, where we're from, it'll probably be worth like 300,000. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) It's like ridiculous. I'm like, can I really do that to myself? But it's just, you're right. Long-term it's going to be worth so much more here. And it's a quality of life thing. Like if you're, if you like to be busy and around people, it's like so much fun here. And I love the fact that you said you were in, um, like the Norwegian uh, countries. Cause I went to Denmark for the first time and I was like, Oh my God, I could live here. Like right? I could seriously like buy a condo there and just live there it's half amazing. the year. <laughs> yeah. I it's spent, so I, I actually never ended up going to Denmark. It was one of the few Scandinavian countries. I didn't I recommend to. it. I would love to go back and Copenhagen. a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah. Copenhagen. I've seen a lot of videos and pictures of the city. It looks amazing to die. for. Um, I would, I would love to go there. Um, Sweden is where I spent most of my time. So I've been to Sweden two times now and both times for, for a good amount of time. Um, and 
Stockholm is one of the most oh, amazing cities I've, I've ever been to. Probably, you know, I was probably a little bit biased just considering that I've been to um, Sweden multiple times, but Stockholm is probably one of my favorite European cities, like over France for sure. I love that. Um, uh, Helsinki in Finland is also beautiful, but Stockholm is like up there. Uh, and then Iceland, Iceland's a pretty close place. Oh yeah, I always do my layover there. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, Iceland's pretty amazing. Yeah, I don't know. It's so interesting because everyone's like, I mean, I do want to go to Italy and Paris and all the American like tourist places, but I, the Swedish countries are just like incredible. I'm like, why don't we live like that? Yeah. But it's so funny too because like we're both from a really small town, and then when you start to like be an adult and then travel to your, you're like, the world is so much bigger than you yeah. would think, but it also is so much smaller than you would think because we we're in the middle of Copenhagen at this really nice restaurant and someone from New York knew this person just like randomly like next to us yeah. and I was like oh my god I, it was funny it was funny when I went to um Sweden and Finland back in the when I was still playing not when I was mm -hmm. coaching um and I had a super long travel trip like I left Boston I went to Iceland I got laid over in Iceland for like almost 20 hours oh my god like, like never came um, and then on top of that, my bag with all my gear got left in Boston. So my <laughs> flight got rerouted and I had to go from Iceland to Oslo, Norway. And then I went to Stockholm and I ended up getting to Stockholm like almost a full 24 hours later than when I was supposed to yeah. and got to the hotel and basically crashed. Like I just went to bed. Like I had been up for almost 36 hours. Like I was just ready to sleep Yeah. and I slept and I got up in the morning and I was the mess like I was just I was still so tired like I was jet lagged like I couldn't figure it out and I walked down I walked downstairs in the lobby of the hotel I grabbed the, my sticks I grabbed you know whatever I had to go to the rink and I got on the bus and like my eyes are closing like I'm I'm a zombie and um I hear my name called from the back of the bus and I was like pause for a second because I was like there's only one person on this bus that knows me and it's my coach <laughs> and I turn around and it's this kid Pat that I played with years ago and he was like what are you doing here and I was <laughs> like dude I'm I'm here to play and like I said I'm still asleep like I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not awake I'm like I'm here to play dude like I'm what do you mean and then I like I like was like wait, wait Pat I was like what are you doing here and like we had played together like three years before that when I was still in high school like on like a, a, another team That's so it was just funny. crazy it's a small world but yeah and then like it even feels that way now like going back because I go back every year Love it. um twice a year I do um Italy and France in the spring and I do Sweden and Finland in the fall That's or so the late cool. summer and early fall um to go back and coach the teams that I used to play for <gasps> that's so cool um, so, I love that oh, it's, it's so, I'm, I'm super lucky my coach like and I got along really well when I was a nice. player and then when I stopped playing he was like I, I want to bring you on board yeah um so I it's amazing for me. I, I mean, I get to go twice a year and go to all these different countries multiple times. So yeah, it's pretty cool. But um, yeah, super small world over there. Yeah. And I've heard many stories from other people too that say the same thing. They're like, oh, I know this person. I know that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. And it's like so fun too. And the fact that your coach invited you back to coach and then just like your past clients are like giving referrals like it just shows that the way you do things and just your personality and it's just like amazing if you just really put in effort and work hard like what comes back to you so yeah no thank you I appreciate that yeah, yeah I mean there's a uh, it's definitely it's definitely a learning curve and like I said I feel like I was super fortunate to to grow up as quick as I did yeah and yeah. a lot of that came with that um you know that was that was the first thing my, the, my coach said to me when he asked me to come back he was like you know the way you carried yourself as a player he goes I think would translate very well into a coach and um so it, it was definitely another kind of kind of going back to the point where we were talking about closing a first deal or like doing something yeah. like that like it's just like that that confidence that that other people have in you that you you do start to see in yourself and you kind yeah. of start to build on that yeah Which is definitely huge and and definitely important for growth yeah for sure and it's a process and some people don't get that till they're 40 years old but the best advice I can give is just keep going because like that's the best yeah. thing you can do yeah yeah no experience is everything the more you do the more you're gonna learn and for sure um yeah. 
Oh my gosh, this was such a fun like conversation. I really appreciate it. It's so cool. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. This was this was great. Yeah. So is there anything else you want to say or like one last piece of advice that you would give to people making future decisions for themselves? Um, yeah, I mean, kind of, you know, I feel like we touched on a lot of different things. Um, something that I really started to focus on was, you know, working and it's a, it's a, it's an old, you know, saying it's pretty cliche, but working smarter, not working harder. Um, you can work, you can work super hard and get half as done as somebody who's working smart. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and like I said, the way the world is constantly changing and you have, um, social media at your fingertips and, and anybody at your fingertips, you know, talking, talking to mentors, you know, pick, pick something you want to be successful in and be really specific about it. Don't be like, mm-hmm. I want to be a successful business person. Be like, I want to own a business and I want to own this business and this is what it's going to do. Right. And find somebody who did that, like right. find a mentor, find somebody that was successful doing that and learn everything you can from them. Mm-hmm. And you know, the more specific, the better, because you're, you're just going to be, you know, there's a million, there's millions of businessmen and businesswomen, and they're, you know, they're all grouped together. But if you're saying, I want to own this business, and I want to do this specific thing, you just, you just cut your circle down to be, to be the best. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like I said, with like going back to the test, the real estate test, like mm-hmm. I, I had a hard time passing that test. And, you know, the, my broker that I said that I got along with really well, she told me that that test has nothing to do with how good of an agent you're going to be. Good, yeah. um, you could fail the test 10 times and still be the best agent. And you could pass the test on your first time and never close a deal. It, it, <laughs> it makes no difference. Yeah. Um, so with that, like running into running into trouble, running into roadblocks, like don't don't give up on whatever it is that you're trying to focus on and you're trying to succeed on um there's there's a way to do it there's there's always a way to do it and those would probably be my 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 few things I mean obviously kind of cliche but I mean relating them to my experiences that those were the biggest things that I took away because I was very close a couple times to walking away from that exam yeah I was like I've seen all these questions a million (laughs) times I was like I can't get them right I was like maybe this isn't for me and it just kept going and kept going and then I had it I had a really great year. So I love that. Yeah. And I feel like your path going against the mainstream and kind of just doing you has worked out and like, Hey, you're on a great path. And like, I can't wait to see like what life brings you. Cause it's just been so exciting to like, see your Instagram yeah. pop up and all your new deals. So it's like really great. So yeah, can you, likewise. yeah, thank you. Can you plug yourself? Like how can people find you if they're interested in booking you as an agent or your Instagram, all yeah. that? So my Instagram and my Facebook are the same, um, the same handle. It's just Tucker Arnold Real Estate. Um, same picture on both of them. It's just like my, my, you know, my my shot for my business cards. Um, and then my email is Tucker at EastKeyRealty.com. Nice. Um, right now things are kind of in an in between phase. I got a couple of clients that I'm working with. Um, that are looking for, you know, after the winter, um, but we're getting kind of a jump start on things. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where everyone can reach me. Um, always, always on my phone. Like I, I'm always answering text, emails, <laughs> Facebook messenger, whatever, whatever it may be, even if, even if people aren't ready to buy, even if people aren't ready to, you know, rent, whatever, whatever it may be, you got questions about real estate, you got questions about properties, mm. let me know. Be happy to help. Um, it's, it's what we do, you know, it's, it's not always about selling houses. It's true. You're, you're, you're talking with people. You're making connections with people. For sure. Uh, so, yeah. Definitely. I love that. Well, thank you so much for coming on. This was really Thanks fun. Thanks for having me. This was great. It was a, it was a great conversation. And, um, yeah, this, this was awesome. Awesome.